So if I go king to g1, then he can take the rook of check, but now he can't. Maybe this is a perpetual. I've just gotten lucky. It may not be. But I don't think his pieces can help out. Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing the rapid rating climb to 2000 Lo on chess.com. I'm pretty confident we can get there in the next few episodes. We basically play a 15 minute plus 10 second increment game on chess.com. I'll try and explain my thought process while I play and we'll do a brief analysis afterwards. I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you think of the game in the comment section below. Let's get into it. Okay, so we have the white pieces against Sarfax Stoic from India. And we have e4, e5. So you guys know exactly what's going to happen. And knight c3 is the greatest move in existence. Um, maybe a slight bias, but we're playing a Vienna game. We would love to see knight c6 here because that is just a blunder um, to queen g4. And there's some very strange lines after queen f6, knight d5, queen f2, king d1. And it gets very complicated. But my opponent goes for knight to f6, which is a more accurate response. And here, black is basically threatening knight e4, knight e4, and d5 with a fork. This is very reminiscent of the center fork trick, which happens in a slightly different move order, um, which is played by black against white still, but in a slightly different <clears throat> way normally with the knight on c6. But I mean, it still applies here. And I think d3 should be a very principled response to this because we want to try and prepare f4. But I'm also tempted to play bishop to g5 just to pin the knight to the queen because moves like knight to d5 are quite annoying. And because my opponent has played bishop to c5 and d6, when bishop to g5 is played, my opponent can't go bishop to e7 to break the pin on the queen which means that it could be difficult for my opponent to actually deal with it. Knight to d7 is the obvious idea to protect the knight, but then this bishop is locked in. My opponent goes knight to c6, which does leave the option of knight to d5 open, but I don't want to commit to that too early, because if I go knight to d5 and I get prompted to take, let's say knight d5, bishop e6, knight f6, pawn f6, bishop e3 or something, then my opponent can actually utilize the open g file. If I'm going to try and ruin my opponent's pawn structure on the king side, I want it to be done once he castles. And besides, I'm not being rushed to make a decision here, so I don't need to make a decision. I could go f4 and continue with the plan. Queen f3 would be tempting if knight to d4 wasn't playable. Knight e2 might be a good move, actually, and I think I'm going to play it. I'd like to put the knight on f3, but I want to leave the option of f4 open. Here we have bishop to g4, pinning the knight, of course. I could go queen d2 to break the pin, although I don't think it's that necessary. I could castle, play king h1 and go f5, sorry, f4, so that the f pawn isn't pinned to the king, but my rook will be supporting the pawn. I could go h3, but my opponent will probably just retreat. So I don't really see the point in that. I suppose my opponent could try and play knight d4, but the knight is well defended, so that's not really a concern. I think I'm just going to castle. If my opponent starts trying to boot my bishop around like this, then if g5 is played and bishop to g3, then I just have extra support for the f4 push, and my opponent's kingside structure will be pretty weak. I suppose g5 and e5 pawns would clamp down on f4 a fair bit. But maybe I can try and break with d4 at an opportune moment. Yeah, he does go for it, which is actually an interesting idea. Because he has a fair bit of pressure on my position now. But I'm not really sure how he continues moving forward. I assume he wants to castle queenside. I'm going to go a3 because I want to play b4 and try and apply some pressure to his pieces. Okay, a5 I'm not really concerned with because if he does castle queenside, I can just play b4 anyway to try and force the a file open. King h1 is tempting. Maybe I can go f3 and drop the bishop back to f2 to challenge this strong bishop. 
looks like a good idea. Knight to d5 also looks good. I can try and prepare c3. Maybe trade off this knight. But then I might be helping my opponent play f5, which he probably wants to do. This knight isn't all that good anyway. So I think king h1. Knight h5 going after this bishop definitely exists. Or maybe trying to put the knight on f4. But I don't think I'm particularly concerned about it. Yeah, he goes knight d4. I think I want to go f3 now. Because obviously he's putting pressure on the pinned knight. And I don't want that pressure. That is very annoying. So we're going to break the pin. This bishop doesn't have a whole lot of options, to be honest. He could go back to e6. And then we can choose whether we want to trade or not. If he goes back to h5, he's kind of locked out of the game. So I think I'd very happily welcome that. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're his only options, really. If he takes on e2 first, then obviously we should take the knight back and then decide what we're going to do. I think there is a case to be made for if, um, say, knight e2, you could go for this because you'd be opening up attacks on the f-file. But black can always take on g3 with check or play knight f4 to block the f-file. So I don't think that's all that useful. So if knight e2, I suppose you're choosing between queen e2 and knight e2. The pro of knight e2 is that we support the d4 square and we clear the way for pawn to c3 to play d4. Which could potentially get this bishop a bit more active. And also just explode the center a bit because my opponent's king is weak. Well, weaker than mine, I would argue. If knight e2, we could also play queen to e2 and maybe put a knight on d5. But I feel like we're not really accomplishing a whole lot by doing that. Because if my opponent just trades, then he's preparing the move f5, which is what he wants to do anyway. So I don't think we should really facilitate um, a trade of knights in non-detrimental terms for my opponent if my opponent wants to get this knight out of the way to play f5 i want him to have to pay something to do that whether it be wasting a move by putting the knight on like g8 to get it out of the way or putting it on say h5 and then i drop my bishop back and then you have to spend time maneuvering it into a better square and if we do retreat our knight back to e2 after an exchange we can always trade on f4 and then a move like d4 after c3 then would also undermine the f4 square a bit if this pawn were to take. It, I mean, we don't necessarily have to calculate that far in the future. It's not really, it's not necessary, but it's good to have those ideas in the back of our mind. Okay, I think we should probably take. I think we should take. Knight takes doesn't make much sense to me. Pawn takes I didn't think was that good because now you don't have the f5 pawn break and it's difficult for black to do anything on the king side now. So I'm tempted to go if knight d4 pawn d4 knight e2 e5 stops f4 annoying if knight d4 if bishop to d4 we can go knight to e2 if bishop b2 like rook b1 bishop a3 rook b7 we sack a pawn but we get an interesting position don't know how to evaluate that maybe my opponent's trying to stop me from putting a knight on f5 by taking with the pawn maybe that's the idea it feels off definitely feels off he probably wants to put the knight on h5 I could go bishop to f2. That feels like a good move because this bishop is just looking at nothing. And like we've already established, f4 cannot be played. So that makes me then go towards d4 as my pawn break. That, I think, has to be our way out of this position. And obviously, if we can support that with c3, then that's very, very good. If my opponent castles kingside, he's just going to be weak forever. If he castles queenside, this a5 move could come back to bite him, and I could use it as a hook to try and force open the a file. Queenside still might be the best option, but it isn't perfectly safe. 
And I also don't think my opponent, although these pawns have far, like advanced a good bit up the board, I don't think he really has any attack against my king. I mean, g4, we could potentially just meet with f4 anyway and try and open the center a bit. Wow. Knight c6. What a strange move. So if we take, we leave my opponent with two sets of double pawns. These pawns are isolated. Bishop takes, pawn takes. We should seriously consider this. Now, he would have an insane clamp on d4 and f4 which is the downside of doing this. So I'm not exactly sure how I would create much play in that position. Because although I ruined my pawn structure, I don't actually break out. Alternatively, I could play d4. Now with 1, 2, 3 supporters against 1, 2, 3, I can, still, I, I, I can now do that. If I do go for d4, let's say takes, 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 e5... Queen c4. It's a nice position. I have the open, semi open d file. I can try and make use of the d5 square. Something like queen c6 in that position. I have queen e6, so my opponent has to be very careful. I think that makes the most sense. I think that makes the most sense. I can try and use the d file from there. And yes, I fix my opponent's pawn structure. Because if, um, if in this position I were to take on c5, my opponent has two sets of doubled pawns. By playing d4, if my opponent takes, his pawn structure is completely intact. But I think that we gain an awful lot of compensation in terms of activity. And my opponent does have to be careful. If something like takes... Oh, well. Yeah, let's take back with the knight. If you play something like e5 here, then we get the f5 square, which is very, very strong. That would be really difficult for my opponent to challenge properly. And I mean, like say e5, knight f5, takes, takes, knight e7, he can challenge it, I suppose. But I could just give a check to make it so he can't castle. I could retreat back to e3 and maybe try and get a knight to d5 and slow play the position. There's an awful lot of opportunities to expose a weakened d5 square if e5 is played. So the difficult position and my opponent castles. Hmm. Okay. I suppose that was to be expected. I'd like to make b4 work. I think it does work. Because if b4 takes takes, my opponent has major problems on a8. Just like, of course he has knight b8, but I think I'm more than willing to give up a pawn to create these kinds of issues for him. And then maybe following something like rook a8, knight b8, up with knight b5 threatening like knight to a7 checkmate. Of course, he doesn't have to fall for something like that. But also bear in mind like the weakness of e6. Or if e5 is played, the weakness of f5. I think there's a lot of problems with black's king, black's king safety here. All because he played this a5 move. And if he ignores me, let's say he goes bishop to b6 in this position. and refuses to open things up i mean i can take and force open at least the b file okay he takes me yeah i think mm, he does have a4 but oh can i go queen a7 that looks like an issue i think my opponent's blundered there to be honest though his knight was already hanging so he was kind of screwed regardless. But there is a big problem here where I'm threatening checkmate because, like I said, this king is not safe. His own pieces are blocking him in. And I'm threatening a5. Now, queen c6 is a nice move. He attacks my knight and gives his king an escape square. So queen a8, king d7 would be a blunder because I'd have two pieces hanging. So I didn't see that idea. It's a good move. How do I 
continue. This okay, my recording kind of cut out there because I've ran out of disk space. So I really need to get that sorted. That is a very good move. Uh and that's frustrating because I just didn't see it. Straight up just missed it. Okay, okay, now we've got to figure this out. So the problem is my knight just doesn't have that many squares. Now I could retreat my queen to defend my knight. And then it then if a move like mm, pawn a4, I have like b5 to try and disconnect the queen from the pawn. That looks decent. Of course, if my opponent takes, then I open up the a file and I get what I want. Queen e3, if d5, I just take, and then e5 is weak. I don't think that's a problem. That looks like the best idea to me. Just defending the knight. And fair play, I just completely missed this idea of queen c6 from my opponent. But I also don't think it solves the issue of the a5 pawn. Because at the end of the day, if he, if he trades with me, he still has issues down the A-file. And if I take him, I mean, he has issues on the B-file. I can try and push A6 at some point to break apart the structure. If he advances, then B5 should just win the pawn anyway. Yeah, I think we're okay here. Something like G4, I don't think I'm concerned about. I could push f4 in that kind of situation just to try and keep the g and h files completely shut off. Or mm, if g4, I could ignore my opponent and allow him to trade like this. Okay, he does push d5, which is surprising. Take, take. Hmm. Is there a better way to go about this? If I go b5, attacking my opponent's queen. b5, if d4. Take, 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 take. Hmm. Looks okay, but I don't really want to trade queens. I don't really want to do it. But I think I need to deal with this pawn somehow. If knight takes, knight takes. Pawn takes, rook takes. Just doesn't look that good because the c pawn is weak. Although I suppose e5 is weak as well. If I take with the pawn and knight takes, I still have to take with the knight because my pieces are forked. And as we've established, I don't think b5 works here. I don't want to take, but I don't think I have a choice. However, once these exchanges happen, the e-file is going to open. My opponent's king is still weaker than mine, right? Because of the pawn situation on the queen side. The e-pawn is weak. I think it would be a mistake to take here with the queen, by the way. I think that would be a bad move because black should be trying to double up on the D file, I think, and take control of the only open file ASAP because I don't think I can beat him to it. Also, defending E5 and A5 with a rook is better than the queen doing that job. Hmm. Not obvious how I tackle this position. Is C4 playable? c4, queen c4, rook c1. Queen d4. That's annoying because I don't know how to decline the queen trade. Okay. That doesn't really work. Queen e4, defending the pawn and applying pressure on the rook and the queen. Also defending b4, I suppose. It's a move. If rook d4, then I ruin the structure. That should be good. But if, uh, I don't know, just rook to d8. 
c4, then rook d4, take, take, rook c1, a4. That should still be good. That should still be good. But can I just go for something like rook to c1 to support c4? Uh, rook c1, maybe queen c4 is an issue though. That looks actually kind of frustrating. So I'm going to play queen e4. I'm not sure if this is completely the right idea. I suppose I do allow my opponent to play queen c3. The, my, my issue with queen c4 and queen c3 is that it stops this pawn from moving forward and applies pressure to my queen side, which I don't like. I don't like that, but I actually don't think I can do a whole lot about it. Frustrating. I guess I have access to this diagonal, but I don't think it's all that important. Because, I mean, the king can just move. Let's say queen c3. If I take something like rook takes, then rook b1 threatens queen b7, meaning that a3 can't be taken yet. Something like b6 looks risky, but maybe playable. But the point is that I have rook to b3, attacking the queen defended by the pawn, defending a3, and cutting the queen's connection to a3 off. Then I can maybe double up on the b-file, I can maybe go after the e-pawn, I can maybe take over the d-file. That gives me a lot of options. So, yeah, queen c3 maybe doesn't work. Although, after queen c3, pawn a5, my opponent doesn't have to do this. He has options. Okay, c4 looks like the move. I think it has to be the move. I could challenge my opponent on the d-file, since he hasn't brought this rook over. So that is an option. But then he can take on d1 with check. And after I take, then takes takes. The structure is completely symmetrical, and I have absolutely no way to win. And although my opponent is slightly higher rated, I would get one elo if I win. Um, sorry, if I draw, I would like to try and win. So I feel like this doesn't really accomplish what I want. Even if I destroy my opponent's structure, a3 is so weak. I don't like that position. So c4 looks good to me. c4, rook d6. Then if takes, takes. Not sure how I feel about that position. Maybe I can go rook to e1. And if my opponent takes here, then I take with the rook. And the e pawn is quite weak. I keep it isolated. And I keep my pawns together on the queen side. That doesn't look terrible. I could go rook e1 straight away. Also, what was I talking about at queen c3? The rook is hanging. Um, I'm an idiot. I could go rook e1 straight away. And just put pressure on the e-pawn. The e which, to be honest, just looks like a solid plan. That just looks like a, an easy move to play. So let's play it. I think in this position, white is the only side that can really be better because of the isolated e-pawn. I think white is the only side that can really be better h3 is another move that I could play at some point, give my king some breathing room, avoid some back rank mates. But, I mean, h5, g4 could be annoying trying to open up the h file if I do that. However, if the queens come off the board, then I'm not worried about getting mated if something like that happens. I think this position might just be a case of having to make small improving moves and just applying pressure to black's weakness that might just be the best and only real way forward potentially uh okay yeah so now he's defending his queen so that if there's an exchange there he can take with the rook what rather than the pawn again i don't really want to do this because after rook takes it's just good for black i think 
So rookie two looks decent. If C4 in this position. Well, rook D4, I can meet with takes. But then if rook takes, I take here. Take. Take, take. I think black's better. So that doesn't look all that good. I could go rookie two. Could go rookie two. Then if rook d4, the c pawn is no longer a weakness. If something like takes, takes. I could just take on a5 maybe. Mm, it's not perfect, but I could just try and triple up on the e-file. And keep c2 protected. It's an option. Hmm. It's difficult to decide what to do here. Because c4 is the move I want to play. But rook d4, I don't think I really have anything. Hmm. Rook d4, queen f5. Trying to take on e5. But then rook c4, and I'm. I can't really do this. Because of back rank mates, but if this, 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 no, I, I was thinking about checks, but it doesn't work because my rook isn't open on the e file. That's frustrating. I think rookie two is my best bet. Yeah, Black's Black's done a good job here of consolidating his two weak pawns. A4 I'm not sure about. I think that only benefits me. I think that only benefits me, to be honest, because then B4 is, like, stronger. I'm going to go rook A to E1, because... I mean, it can't be a bad move, right? And I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. This seems wrong, though, because b4 is now quite a strong pawn. So I'm not sure that black's gone about that quite correctly. That gives me some hope that I can, that I can try and make something of this position. Now I have some nice pressure. Ooh. That, I mean, you stop c4, but like, b5, that's just weak. That's just a weak pawn. Okay. What about queen f5? I suppose even if I win the e5 pawn, then c2 will hang because my queen will have to move. I could go h3. Give my king an escape square first, which might be a good shout. I'm going to do it. I'm not really concerned about h5, g4. Because I have plenty of control over the g4 square. I could always take with the f pawn and then the queen. So that's fine. I, I don't know. I think black's plan here of in the pawns like this it makes sense from a perspective of stopping me from playing c4 but i think it's the wrong idea i think it's the wrong idea let's see if we can prove it though that's the test can we prove it well we could start with queen to f5 to put pressure on e5 because at the end of the line b5 would hang with check if the queen captures on c2. So I'm going to go queen f5. Have I just blundered e4? Uh, I don't... I actually don't think so. Because if e4 is played, you can't actually take on f3 because the rook would hang. 
So that might actually ruin Black's position if he goes e4. Yeah, that, I don't think it works. I think queen to f7, keeping pressure on the rooks, is a bit of a problem for Black. Because I was thinking initially, okay, I might win the e-pawn, but Black can win the c-pawn. However, if I have the pressure on these rooks like this, maybe not. And also h3 is now a great move because it gives my king an escape square. Did I see this exact variation? No. I Whether e4 is a good move for Black or not, I still blundered it because I just didn't see it when I played queen to f5. But it might be a mistake from Black. <clears throat> Because what does black do here? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm threatening to win this pawn. I have one, two, three attackers. Okay, rook f6, missed that move. Oh, that, that's a good move. That's a good move. Um, mm, That's frustrating. That's a really good move. Because f3 is a problem. Uh, that was bad. That was really bad. Mm, queen e7. Take. I mean, this diagonal is so weak. I could go queen to h5. I mean, it's still horrific, though. Still terrible. Maybe I can hold on. Hmm. This is very, very un not unfortunate. It's just an oversight. It's an oversight. Okay. What do I do here? There's no weaknesses in the black position. The queen's holding everything together, which is the problem. I think I've just got to try and survive now. I've got to accept that I'm worse. Maybe just play a move like King G2 and just try and hold everything together. Which is obviously not the kind of situation that I want to be in. King G2 actually would be a blunder if I play it at the wrong time because of G4 opening up an attack against the Queen. And after Queen G4, then this kind of thing exists. Okay, F3 is just lost. F3 is just lost. Can I do this? Uh, it doesn't accomplish anything. I might just have to try and hold a worse rook end game. But I think the weakness of a3 on the third rank could just destroy me. My opponent could probably go rook takes, rook takes, rook takes here. And with threats of discovered check and attacks on a3 and h3, I think. Is that necessary? That feels unnecessary. I actually... I'm not sure what the idea is behind g4. I mean, sure, there's a discovered attack on the queen. <clears throat> and I can't take with the pawn because of the pin. I can't take with this pawn because my queen's hanging. Can I not just take with the queen? I'm still going to lose this pawn. But I, I just get a free pawn. Hmm... I'm worse, no doubt. I'm probably losing still. Because of, again, the weakness of a3 and h3. But I'm pretty sure my opponent has to take. Like, he needs to cash in. 
Yeah, okay. Um, ugh. Da, 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 da. He just wins A3. That's no good. Hmm. Maybe rook g2 to keep pieces on the board. I mean, it's horrible, but maybe it prolongs the game. Gives me some more chances. Maybe. I mean, the problem with, is just that a3 is hanging, and that is a big issue. Because then the A4 pawn is very close to promotion. But if I can keep more pieces on the board, maybe I can generate counterplay with moves like Rook to E5. Going after B5. Maybe. Speculative. Because now the tables have turned and my king is incredibly weak. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm doing here, to be honest. I'm concerned about my rook on this diagonal, now that my queen is also no longer defending it. But I also need to defend h3. And I'm trying to put pressure on b5 as well, because that's really my only source of counterplay. King h2 is probably a good move. Just holding on to h3, defending the rook, breaking the pin. I, I'm sure my opponent needs to cash in on a3 at some point very soon I need to try and watch out for like any kind of tactics like these but that would require a move like queen c4 to set that up which is part of the reason I want to play king h2 so that my king helps out in the defense of h3 um, this is a like horrible horrible position um, but I also think my opponent has mis mismanaged it. He should be going a pawn up. I don't know why he gave me the g4 pawn. His king is safe for now. Uh, my king is not safe. And his rooks are just very good. Maybe he went rook to f4 so that after he won a3, then he could try and win b4. And also maybe to try and stop c4. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah, this queen is such a good piece. Putting pressure on the diagonal, pressure on c2, defending h6. Yeah, it's a great piece. What? What? I don't get it. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, that's just very nice. That's very, very nice. Is he just messing with me? I think he's messing with me because I can't do anything. And he just plays Rook F2 and I lose. Because I have to abandon the defense of the Rook. I guess if rook f2 I can play king h1 and if takes maybe I have a perpetual. Maybe? That might, w I might have a perpetual. If I go king to g1 then he can take the rook of check but now he can't. And may maybe this is a perpetual. This is not planned, obviously. I've just gotten lucky. It may not be. But I don't think his pieces can help out. I think they're a bit stranded. And as long as I dance on the light squares, to try and box the king in, it might work. Okay, I need to be precise.
don't want to let the king out. I think I should give this check. Then this check. If he goes to c8, then I give this. If he comes back out, I just come back. I think this is a this should be a draw. This should be a draw. If he steps onto the A file, I I shouldn't take the A4 pawn because then he can play like King B6, and I don't want to allow that. And yeah, his pieces just can't get back. Sorry, I'm actually just sending a bit of a trash talk message because my opponent sent me one when I played Queen to F2, which sorry, Queen F7. Um, which was, which was the problem, which kind of like blundered the game away. Um, all in good spirit, all in good spirit, of course. But yeah, I think. Okay, we saved the game. Luckily, apparently, Sarfak is not impressed with the fact that I could only draw, but I I'll take it. <laughs> Oh man, I that was a very interesting game. Like the opening, I'm not really sure how the computer is going to evaluate that because it's a difficult a difficult opening when Black doesn't commit a knight to c6 and he just goes for this kind of kingside expansion plan which is kind of odd in the Vienna. So it was a nice way to try and get me out of my com comfort zone because it worked. Now I just need to not let him somehow swindle a way out here. Well, no, I, I'm swindling. Um, okay, he offers me a draw, so I'll just take that. Because it's a draw. And I mean, I gain one elo. Uh, it's just, yeah, completely a draw. I wonder whether... Yeah, black did have a way to win here. After queen e4... here then he has this mate he just yeah he just fully missed mate the only other way is for me to sack my queen he just missed mate in two Oof. well we'll take that <sighs> i hope you guys enjoyed the game we're gonna get into a brief analysis now um yeah that was kind of crazy um and i would definitely swindled that at the end but hey that's online chess for you let's get into some analysis okay so pretty sure i did just bungle the opening this is all fine d3 d6 bishop g5 is good knight c6 is a mistake but contrary to what i thought i was supposed to jump in immediately now after bishop e6 i wasn't sure what to do i didn't like this and the computer agrees with me, except I didn't have to do that. The computer wants me to do this. And then if you take the knight, then I can take back with the bishop. But the point is my knight is quite strong. Something like c3, rook g8, b4, bishop b6, <clears throat> queen h5. And if this takes so that f2 can't be taken here oh then you can come back with the knight oh and the bishop is threatened because of the pin on the pawn okay i mean difficult to see but good to know you get this kind of position do not do what i did and go knight g to e2 because i actually just blundered a very simple tactic that i have used so many times against opponents fortunately he didn't see it we have bishop g4 Castling, I should have gone knight d5, but okay, h6. That's a mistake I need to take. Oh yeah, that makes so much sense. That's so obvious. I should be seeing that. That was kind of silly, but okay. Bishop g4, castle, h6. You retreat, which is not good. Queen d7 is a mistake though. h5 was better. a3 is bad. A5 is also bad, so we're both making lots of uh, mistakes here, but it's not an easy position. F3 is good. Take, take bishop F2. And yeah, D4 is the right idea. So I, I didn't really like this, because although the pawn structure is kind of ruined, there's no obvious way for white to get into the game here, because my pawn structure is better, but it can't do anything. 
and the computer agrees with me. I mean, black is the only one with useful night outposts, realistically. So he's just always better. Therefore, we go d4, try and open things up. <clears throat> and we find b4, which is the right idea. White is slightly better. My opponent handles the situation well. e5. Queen a7 is inaccurate. I should just drop back to like d3 or e3. Stay patient. Try and break through on the queen side. The queen c6 is what I missed. Queen e3, d5, and we have full equality. <clears throat> After, you know, queen e4, rook e8, it's just completely equal. And then I went wrong somewhere. Queen f5 is not the right idea. So, okay, queen h7 is apparently better. King h2 is fine. C3 is fine. C3 because you can't take. But I guess there's nothing that either side could really do here. But the issue is that I thought I was better. So I felt like I had to push for something where I probably shouldn't have. I probably have, should have just sat back. But it's, it's tough to do that. It's tough to do that. You want to make something happen. So queen f5 is just wrong. e4. And queen f7 is just horrific. I need to go queen g4 in this position. And after e3, takes, takes, takes. Check. Check. This is not playable because of this deflection tactic. So f4, queen f4, queen takes, pawn takes. Let's say rook f3, rook d2, takes, takes. Black is apparently better by a large margin. I guess the queen side majority is just dangerous. But c6 is the computer's favorite move, which is just strange to me. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But queen f7 is not the right move. I just missed this. And okay, we try and hold on here. Rook f2. <coughs> and here, I just did not understand why my opponent didn't take. I mean, this position is horrific. Um, you know, if someone like king h2, I'm actually just getting mated. King g1, I am getting mated. And if king g2... I mean, I'm just screwed anyway. Like, I'm going to lose. Uh, at the very, very least, I'll probably lose b4 and the pawn will march through. It's just a, a horrific position. g4, I just didn't understand. It's just a bad move, really. I mean, black is still winning, but g4 is unnecessary. So we take. Rook f3. Rook g2. I'm basically just trying to keep pieces on the board here. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a really bad cough. Give me a sec. Okay, so my queen's attacked. Um, I put it on h5 just to try and control some useful squares, right? Rook f1. I mean, taking is apparently inaccurate, but like, I'm not just going to give up a rook. King h2, queen d6, and this is the move that I missed, and I'm just completely lost. All black needs to do is after king h1 not take the rook taking the rook draws the game and that was what i was hoping for right black has to give this check like i said at the end of the game because if the king moves i get mated and if i block i just lose a piece fortunately my opponent took the rook and i have a perpetual where as long as i keep the king in the box i'm good <clears throat> because i was correct in saying this doesn't work because the king gets to b6. And okay, what if what if this? Okay, king c6. If I give this check, the king gets to run this way, which makes it easier for the pieces to get back and defend the king. Because if I then give a check on like d4, I mean, okay, you can't really do this because the rook's hanging, but the king gets further and further towards his pieces, which can then block. And if I can't check him for one move, it's game over. I'm getting mated somehow. So you have to keep the king in the box. This is the box. I've got to keep him in there. So that's what we do. We give the checks to keep him in this box. 
We do not let him ever get to b6, and my opponent offers me a draw because he knows that he can't get out. And that's the game. Honestly, just very well played by my opponent. He was just really, really good. I misplayed the opening. My opponent got me into a difficult middle game. Played it very well. Navigated to a completely drawn end game after having a dubious end of the middle game. And I just overstretched <clears throat> with queen to f5 and queen f7. But my opponent just mismanaged the end. He probably could have made it easier for himself. But even in a completely winning position, you've got to be careful. There's tricks. And, of course, we utilize those tricks. We get a perpetual uh, check to draw what obviously should have been a lost game. But that's chess. For those of you below 2000 ELO, this thing happens at this level of chess. You've got to keep fighting. Thank you very much for watching. Click the video that appears. It should be over there um, because YouTube thinks you're really going to like it. And I'll see you in that video.